Hello everyone, welcome to Decode ITES. This is a single learning platform for multiple IT infrastructure technologies. Do like, share and subscribe our channel to never miss out our videos. Let's continue with the learning. So let's continue with the introduction to Linux. Let's continue with the basic and most popular question. What is Linux? Linux is one of the popular version of Unix operating system. It is both open source and enterprise as its source code is freely available. Yes, it is free to use and Linux was designed considering the Unix compatibility. Its functionality is a bit similar to that of Unix. From smartphones to cars, computers, desktop, servers, the Linux operating system can be found everywhere nowadays. But besides being the platform of the choice to run devices like uh, desktop servers and embedded systems globally, Linux is one of the most secure, reliable and very free operating system available at present. Just like Windows, iOS, Mac OS, Linux is also an operating system. In fact, one of the most popular platforms on the planet and Android is is also powered by Linux operating system. Linux distributions. What are these? So Linux distribution is an OS that is made up of collection of software based on Linux kernel. Or we can say distribution contains a Linux kernel and supporting libraries and software. We can get Linux based operating system by downloading one of the Linux distributions and these distributions are available for different type of devices like embedded devices, personal computers, etc. Around 600 plus distributions are available in the market as of now. And some of the popular Linux distributions are Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE, Fedora. Now, Architecture of Linux First, it consists of hardware on which the operating system gets installed. Then it comes with the kernel. And then shell covers up the hardware and kernel both. Then we are installing applications and utilities uh, to our OS. And then the user finally uses it in a very convenient way. Now let's discuss them deeply. What is kernel? Kernel is the heart of operating system. The term kernel often refers to the operating system. The critical code of kernel is sorted in a special memory area to protect it from other programs. It is vital component as it is the basis for the proper functioning of the entire kernel system. Kernel performs a variety of tasks including process management, managing hardware device and handling interrupts. Furthermore, it performs memory management, file handling and task shipping. A system call is a request by a process to the kernel. The kernel manages these system calls and other resources. Now, what is shell? Shell is the interface between user and kernel. It is a command line interpreter and it is interface between the user and kernel. The user can enter commands to the shell, then it interprets the commands to perform the required task. Furthermore, it executes programs and shell scripts. A shell script is a set of commands only, nothing much. The user should follow the standard syntax to write commands to the shell. There are various types of shells we can see. Bond shell, which is marked as SH, is the most popular Unix shell. The default form for Bond shell is dollar sign. The Con shell KSH is backward compatible with Bond shell and includes many features of C shell. Further, we will discuss complete shell part in our coming videos. Components of Linux system. Under this, we are having Linux operating system installed, which consists of system software, user processes, user utilities, compilers, system library, kernel, kernel modules, and then we are having hardware, 
which is showing CPU, RAM and input output devices. So at last we need to discuss what is kernel, system libraries and system utility. We have already discussed kernel in our last slide but let me explain it more. Kernel is the core part of Linux. It is responsible for all major activities of this operating system. It consists of various modules and it interacts directly with the underlying hardware. Kernel provides the required abstraction to hide low level hardware details to system or application programs. System library. What are these? So these are special functions or programs using which application program or system utilities accesses kernel's feature. These libraries implement most of the functionalities of operating system and do not require kernel modules code access rights. Then we come with system utility. These are the programs responsible to do specialized individual level tasks. Now we have to discuss what is kernel mode and user mode. So basically we will discuss about the differences. Kernel component code executes in a special privileged mode called kernel mode with full access to all the sources of the computer. This code represents a single process, executes in single address space and do not require any context switch and hence is very difficult and fast. Now support code which is not required to run in kernel mode is in system library. User programs and other system programs works in user mode which has no access to system hardware and kernel code. Now Red Hat vs CentOS. If we talk about license, CentOS is completely freeware whereas Red Hat do require a license. Also you can use evaluation version of Red Hat but it will not provide complete features. If we talk about security, both are providing same set of securities like SE Linux, NSS, Linux Spam and Firewall D. Now, package management, both provides YUM and DNF. Now, you are a bit confused like what is DNF? Some of you already heard about YUM but not about DNF. So DNF is the new package management system which comes under Red Hat 8 only or we can say CentOS 8. If we talk about the installer medium, Red Hat supports only ISO mode. Like you can install operating system using ISO image only. Whereas in CentOS you can use ISO or live CD method. Now bootloader. Both provides GRUB2 only. If we talk about storage management, they are also same. Both provide LVM and SSM. We'll discuss what is LVM and SSM later on our videos. If we look about clustering part, Red Hat supports only RHCS, which is the clusterizing management system uh, for Red Hat only. If we talk about CentOS, is a Linux HE, it's a Linux high availability system. Now, containerization, Red Hat support only OpenShift, whereas CentOS supports Docker and Kubernetes. Now, uh, is a question: Who wins the race? We can't comment, it depends on the infrastructure and the services you are providing, the way how you want to treat your operating system. It depends on all the scenarios. But yes, if you want to use a freeware, then you can go for CentOS for sure. Most of you are already concerned about how to learn Linux. You are not finding right content over the internet. You have spent a lot of time in watching the videos, but not finding the right content. So here we are. You just need uh, a laptop or a computer, desktop, whichever you are having with Windows or Linux based OS on it. Plus you need VMware workstation. You can also use Hyper-V. These are the software which is used to create virtual machines on which we will train you how to administer Linux. Third one, you need a CentOS or that had evaluation version or enterprise version ISO. You can download it from their sites. We can also provide the links on our coming videos. Then you need an internet connection on machine because there is uh, some EPL 
all you can say some packages required which comes over internet only so you yes you do require internet connection now uh, we are considering you are having basic IT knowledge but no worries if you are not having we will start it all from scratch thanks for watching do like share and comment our videos also subscribe to our channel